So this is Liam. Liam is going to take control of the conversation. Came up with all the questions. So, all of them. Um, nice so to meet you, Liam. Nice to meet you too. Um, first question: What was the most challenging part of moving from being a lawyer to being a brickmaster? Well, um, it was an interesting transition because uh, I was I was in this very secure lifestyle where I was making six figures and I had this you know, this job as a professional working on Wall Street deals. And uh, I was changing everything about my life to becoming, you know, an artist that didn't know if he would be able to pay rent the next day or the next month. So it, it was a, it was it was hard to make that transition, mostly, though, because of the people around me. Um, I had a lot of folks that were supportive. My family was supportive. Um, but my colleagues at the law firm were very confused. They were very, um, some were very supportive, but some were, some were, I don't want to say jealous, but, you know, there was some, this aspect of jealousy because, you know, when you're working together in this grind at a law firm and then you leave it behind, um, people, people were a little negative about my choice and thought I was making a mistake, honestly. So there was this, 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 challenge to overcome that feeling of, is this a mistake? Am, am I giving up something so secure to, to pursue a passion? And, and is that going to result in folly? But in the end, it was the right choice. I followed what I wanted to do and uh, it's worked out. Um, so this second question um, sort of ties into the first. What do you take from sure. your job as a lawyer to your job as a brickmaster and why? Yeah, that's a good question. And it, it's an interesting one because as a lawyer, you, you know, you're taught to think critically about things and you, and I was a corporate lawyer. I focused a lot on contracts. And so for me, I now can uh, run my, my own business essentially, right? My art studio, selling my art, displaying my art, that's a business. And I have used my business uh, acumen that I've learned from law school to help me as a lawyer. Uh, or to help me as an artist, I should say. And um, I think, you know, for example, other artists may get a commission and there may be a contract with their client, right? And they may then have to send that contract to their lawyer to review. I don't have to do that. I can just review the contract myself and it makes it go faster. Um, but I will say this, the, the worst day as an artist is still better than the best day as a lawyer. As someone who was also a non-practicing attorney, I wholeheartedly agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> You've got the child of two lawyers here, so we totally um, fall into that jealousy category. Clearly. That's why I'm so that. stubborn. It is. <laughs> Maybe. Um. So this is this next question is about your sculptures. What sculpture sure. pre presented the most challenges with stability, and why? Stability. Yeah, there's there's a bit of engineering that comes into some of these sculptures. Anything that's top heavy, right, is is always a problem. Like recently, I made a sculpture of a flamingo, and the flamingo stands on its own. It stands on one leg most of the time as a real bird. But when you think about a flamingo built out of Lego, that bird has a lot of weight to it, and that that leg is very thin and tiny. So there's a bit of engineering. I think overall, all time. The biggest challenge was probably the T-Rex skeleton I did. It's about 18 feet long. It, it uses about 80,000 bricks. And there was a lot of engineering that went into that one. Um, sure. Just to um, clear something up, how big is 18 feet? How big is 18 feet? I mean, it's it's six, seven meters. Um, oh, so it's like taller than two meters. Uh, so it's it's like three monkeys that's the plus a half. Oh, Jesus. Huh. That, that's yeah, it. it. Yeah, it to took an entire summer to build. Did you have to use a ladder? To get up to like Well, five. it's not that tall. It's, it's more lengthwise, right? Oh. It's like it's like a T-Rex um, kind of stretched out lengthwise. So from skull to the tip of the tail is 18 feet. How oh. tall was it? It's about uh, at its highest point, I want to say seven feet. It's okay. currently uh, in Los Angeles. It's currently in Los Angeles at the California Science Center on display. Oh, 
for like mosaics, like the real life mosaics. What's the hardest like real life thing to build in detail with Legos and why? Well, I think human forms really present the biggest challenge. Anytime you're trying to capture a specific person, uh, there, there's a lot of detail that goes into that and, and just the aspect of trying to create the curves of the human body, all the details of a human face, that always is challenging. And especially if it's someone well known um, and you're trying to capture their look, you know, uh, that, that, one, that brings a lot of challenge because let's face it, Lego has its limitations. Uh, for instance, for me, I use a lot of just rectangular bricks. I know there's hundreds of and thousands of other elements, but a lot of times I focus on just using rectangular bricks and that provides its own set of challenges on capturing detail of a, of a person. Okay. What charges are presented with a build with a motor compared to something still? Well, uh, when you're using a motor and it has motion and it becomes a kinetic sculpture, there are different challenges. The biggest one, and it's, it's, it's not that fun or exciting, is just that it breaks down a lot, right? That the motors run out of energy, like um, we've burned out motors because these motors are, are a toy. They're intended to be a toy, like everything in Lego, it's intended to be a toy. So they're not intended to run for hours at it, on end. They're intended to be used for a few minutes, get a break for a few minutes. So if you run it for eight hours straight, it's just gonna burn itself out. And so when we've used, <clears throat> when we've used motors on a display, for instance, maybe at, at a museum or something where it's running constantly, the motors only last a day and then they have to be replaced. So you have to think about that when you're building something with a motor, can I replace the motor easily? Because if you build it within a lot of bricks and it's hard to get to, you're gonna have an issue every time you have to replace it. Okay, one final question, and this is about the Brickmaster show. When designing, sure. the, when designing the challenges for the contestants, which one proved the most difficult to design and why? Hmm, the most difficult. Um, well, I know the answer, but I can't tell you it because it's it hasn't come up yet. There's a there's there's a challenge that comes up later in the season that for me was quite challenging, and coming up with a way for the contestants to use it uh, was good was a challenge. Let me think about something from maybe that you've already seen. Um, I mean, any, uh, there's so many different challenges we work on. I'll tell you one thing. One of the things we did this season is we built something bigger than we've ever built for Lego Masters before. Uh, it's, it's gigantic. It, it's, uh, it's about 200 square feet in the end. So it, it's pretty big. Uh, that, that was a real challenge. Um, you know, our end, my, my work is coming up with things that make the life of the contestants easier. You know, I give them something they can build off of. So, so they have a starting point generally. For example, uh, building, build, you saw the earthquake challenge, right? Where the, the shake challenge. So I had to build a base that they could start on that would work to keep their building as a, as a strong foundational point. Uh, with the hats, I had to build all the, uh, the mannequin heads, which was just a lot of a uh, lot of just repetitive building. Uh, with the parade challenge, we had to build that entire city. When I say we, it's a team of me and another gentleman, uh, Brandon Griffith. It's just the two of us that build everything for the show. And, and so we had to build that whole city. Um, and, you know, we don't have a lot of time because these these challenges are they, they come every week. So we're we only spent a couple weeks on that city to create that whole street view for the parade floats to go down. So the biggest challenge for us is the time. We, we, we're we working very quickly. We work very long hours. Fortunately, my art studio, I have 10 million Lego bricks in the inventory. So I don't have to worry about going and buying more bricks. I can just grab bricks as I need them, but I keep that many because I can't, I don't have time to go shopping. I just have to have the bricks ready to go so I can keep building. Okay. Episode of it of the next of this season is the one that you can't tell us. Can you tell us the episode number? 
Well, uh, I'm pre. It's it's going to come at the end of the season, and I'm trying to do the math. It's either going to be nine or ten. I think it's going to be ten. Okay. So, yeah, you'll have to wait and see on that one. Um. Sorry. So, so when you're doing the production bill. Yeah. Which one of them has been the most challenging and why? I, I mean, the cities, the cities are always challenging. Last season, we had to do a mega city uh, where the contestants built, I think that was episode five and they had to build like monsters and other, yeah. other parts of the city. That one was, that one was again, challenging just because of the sheer amount of work we had to do in a week to get that entire city built. Um, and we're also building like the signage, you know, not many people realize, but the stuff behind the signs behind that say like Lego Day Parade or, uh, you know, the signs that said splat and, and pow and all the signs behind the, um, the exploding challenge. You know, we have to build all that sign, all those signs as well at the same time. So it's just the sheer amount of work getting done in a week is, is really the challenge from a technical aspect. You know, building buildings is not as challenge. It's not that challenging because you're doing rectangular forms. It's not like doing human forms where it's a lot of curves. But the sheer amount of work be becomes the biggest obstacle. What kinds of things are you guys building on the production side that maybe viewers don't realize you guys are building? Like, I don't think I realized you had kind of built that earthquake base. So, what things are you guys doing right. that we don't necessarily know about? Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot on the set that we've built. Like all the signs that say Lego Masters are made out of Lego. Uh, the 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 little LM symbol where the folks put their minifigs in when they've been eliminated, that's built out of Lego. We've had to do those type of things. So a lot of the set pieces are built out of Lego and the audience may not realize it because the camera never gets that close to it for you to realize it's built out of Lego. Um, we've built a bunch of... There's, the funny thing is, as you go through production, we build a lot of things that never even make it to air. Uh, little gags here and there that we build, you know, and, and they're fun little things uh, that may be used and they may not get used. Um, I, I don't want to give anything away because it may show up later in the season, but there's been some things that we've built that we thought we would have seen by now that haven't shown up. Um, and that's just part of the show you know it's part of the editing process sometimes things get eliminated and we go into the process knowing that that's potentially what could happen what else um i mean that that gives you a pretty good overview between the challenges and the set pieces there's a lot i think i think there's just a lot on set that's built out of lego so if we were going back to season one which theoretically right. everybody's seen so it's not a spoiler what would be two right. things you would tell us to go look out for that maybe we didn't catch the first time? Oh, I'm trying to think. Um, that was a long time ago. I mean- yeah. We could even do two episodes one and two of this season. Yeah, I mean, just, I mean, again, the signage is the one thing I don't think folks realize is built out, like the Lego Day Parade. Did you know that was, that whole yeah. big sign was made out of Lego? Um, uh, the gigantic, well, you know, where the doors open and close and it says Lego Masters, that's all built out of Lego, the red and yellow. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. And, and, and the way I did that sign was I, I greebled it, you know that term, greeble? Nope. where I'm using all the different, so I built the letters flat and then I use all different types of pieces on top of it, all sorts of elements. So slopes and curves and everything all dumped on there in a random order. So it really has some texture. If the camera ever gets up close to it, you see all that texture, but because it's way in the background, it just looks like a sign. Okay. Um, I just have one like what if question. If you had to sure. build like, the whole stage out of like Lego bricks, how long do you think it would take? Well, recently um, 
Brandon and I built something. F so there's the television show Friends had a 25th anniversary recently, and we were asked to build their coffee shop out of Lego, like a full coffee shop, the coffee bar, all the seats, the couches, the tables, the chairs, the lamps, the, the everything out of Lego. And that took us about four months. That used just over a million bricks. Um, and it, we made it so that you could sit on the couches, sit on the table or sit on the chairs, sit at the tables, use the coffee cups, use the, uh, all of it. And, and, and it, it took about four months. So it's possible to build an entire stage out of Lego. It just takes a lot of Lego bricks. And you I'm have surprised. to think like, go ahead. I'm surprised you did that in only four months. I would have taken me at least four years. Maybe, but I bet I bet if you really got in there and you were working, you know, it's it's it was two of us working on it, and and when you get in there and you're doing it, you'd be surprised how fast you can build, right? Like you've built with Lego before for sure, oh, yeah. right? And and how long does it take you to do a set, say an well, average set? Usually, you make it. Usually, I make my dad build it, but he did the most yeah. Isley set in like yeah. two or three days. Yeah, so that's pretty fast, right? Uh, and so, you know. And I mean, he only and he only did it like at night. Yeah, I mean he actually has yeah, like three a regular day job. Three, four hours a day. <laughs> so do you guys have plans that are created to like directions to follow when you're doing something like that? No, we're just going for it. We just make it up as we go. You know, it's just we have to uh what we discuss it with the other producers, what's going to be built. Um, for instance, if they say, okay, we're going to have a parade and we need, you know, 18 buildings going down the side of the street. And then we just start building them. We say, okay, we'll make them about two to three feet tall and all at the minifig scale. And then we just build them. Okay. That is super cool. Do you have any other questions? It's a weird job. Let's face it. It's a very fun job. It sounds fun. It sounds way better than my job, so I, I'm a little jealous. I'm going to go on that jealousy <laughs> side, but um, without without sort of the negativity that comes with it, more the adoration and admiration. Let's go it's that way. It's sort of like something you do for fun, but you get paid. Yes. Does it stay fun? Does it ever become like a job job? Yeah, of course. I mean, everything, you know, uh, especially when you're working with, with deadlines, tough deadlines and rough clients sometimes. I mean, there there are always going to be factors where you're you're questioning, like, is this the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Even when I'm working on a sculpture for myself, I may be working on it, and after a while, I think, ah, does this look right? Am I wasting all this time on something? But you just keep working at it and keep adding those bricks, and eventually you get to that point where you're you're happy with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, even on the show, there's times where where it's tough because a producer will say we want this and we build it and they're like, oh, that's not what we want. Build something else. And you're like, oh, we wasted an entire day building this. And it's, you know, for what? Now we have to change it. And it's tough. I mean, you know what it's like building out of Lego. If you build something out of blue bricks and they're like, we love it, but we want it red. It's not like you could just flip a switch. You got to start from scratch and rebuild the entire thing now out of red. So, so when those moments happen, it, you, you get, you know, you have to just deal with it and keep moving. But one of the things that I've learned from this job of being an artist who works with Lego is patience. You have to have patience because these projects do take time and, and, and they take days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months. You just go into it knowing it's going to take a while. And if, if there's roadblocks, you just have to overcome them and just know it's, it's you got to keep going. And for any future brick masters, I'm, how long a day do you usually have? I mean, I'm not really on set that much, so I'm just working in the studio. And my days are, you know, 14 hours probably from start to finish where we're, we're just plugging away. But we've pulled all-nighters when we've had to, uh, you know, we'll get the call. So I'm based in Los Angeles. My art studio is in Los Angeles. The show in season two was shot in Atlanta. Um, so that meant shipping everything there. So we would get calls for things and it would, you know, if there's not enough time, we have to work quickly so we can get it on the truck to get it out the door. And that meant pulling some all-nighters. Fair enough. Any other questions, Peter? No, nope, I think that's it for me.
I think we're done. I will thank you for joining us here. Mm -hmm.